Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Loki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we actually made it uh, another week. We somehow made it on time. <laughs> we managed somehow. It was close. Yeah. Very close. It up was to the one. Very close. Ten episodes. Very ambitious for us to go for next, but we were able to do it in time. And I think a lot of it is thanks to uh, actually very nice uh, reception that we got there at the beginning, which I was very happy to see. A lot of Jim Tama people very happy to have other people start getting Gin Tama. <laughs> I was about to say, do you think they're going to be unhappy that you just called it Jintama and yeah, we're going to lose fixed, any that's support? What, that's why that I we fixed just... it. I understand my from my PyCon thing that people care way too much about it. I try my best, and sometimes I forget. Sometimes it's a gag, sometimes it's a bit, but then it's a bit nobody else knows that I'm doing on purpose. So, And then other times I just have a bad tongue and stuff like that. But anyway, hopefully they stick around. <laughs> Because we are here to talk about episodes 6 through 15. No, what, no, it would, yes, because 5 was the last one, yes. Actually, so that technically means we watched 9 episodes and not 10. Oh yeah, I guess that's true, because we stopped at 15. But that's Shit. a good round number to stop at. Yeah, you're right, you're right. 9 is perfectly fine. <laughs> we both know, hey, 25 would be the next one. Perfect number. Yeah, it would be weird to stop at, like, oh, episode 16. Yeah, it would be very weird, 100%. Uh, but before we do that, we actually have a... So last episode, we talked about specifically, I mentioned that the way uh, it kind of gets structured around is really weird, like the seasons and stuff. And someone actually wrote a, a full breakdown as to why it is, so I'm just going to read it from the person who... Because it's a lot. And I was like, why? <laughs> I had no idea it was this intense. This is from literally nobody. That is their name on YouTube. <laughs> But they say the reason why there are so many series is because Sunrise took breaks with the anime. The breaks last from a few months to a few years. Each series has its own separate name because legally they could not have the same name when they were brought back on the air. So they made the smallest possible change and went with that. Gintama, Gintama, etc. He put two different like... <laughs> Put them both back to back. That's why I put it. But there's like little tiny like differences. Like there's a square and then there's like an apostrophe at the next one. But you get what I'm saying here. But anyway, Gintama 2006 itself is divided into four seasons, 49 for 50 episodes each, which corresponds with a year's worth of episodes from April to March. There's no weekly break between these seasons. Even though there was some cancellation drama, most fake endings are actually joke episodes that staff made the troll during the weekly release at the end of some seasons. You can see these breaks and how it aired in this table with some examples from season one. It's uh, first aired uh, first aired April fourth, two thousand six. Last air was March 29th, two thousand seven. Season two was the April fifth, two two thousand seven to March twenty seventh, two thousand eight. April third was two thousand eight to March twenty sixth, two thousand nine. April second, two thousand nine to March twenty fifth, twenty ten. And then the return with Gintama on like the little asterisk is fifty one episodes, and that's April fourth, twenty eleven to twenty twelve. And then Gintama Inko Chosen, in Chosen, 13 episodes, October 4th, 2012 to March 28th, 2013. And then the next one, which is the, the Gintama with like a square on it, is 51 episodes. And that's April 8th to 2015 to March 10th to 2016. And then the 8th season is 12 episodes, January 8th, 2017 to March 26th, 27. Another thing to take into account is that Gintama was one of the only shows to adapt 16x9 aspect ratios using 4x3 up until the last season in 2006. To, in, uh, last season of Gintama, 2006 and 2010. There we go. Huh. So, okay. a big break. But yeah, that's funny that to break... They literally just added like a tiny little like... Like a, uh, like a period at like season eight is Gintama, period. <laughs> Different from the other ones. <laughs> Not quite that Gintama. Yes, exactly. That is funny. That's pretty good. All right then, Zen. Now that I've fully explained that, thank you very much. As always, uh, thank you for leaving any comments down below, and let's get into it. So, episode six. Why don't you tell us the name of this uh, episode? Is a promise once made must be kept upon death. So go ahead. Oh man, I have absolutely no idea because it's the first episode that I watched, <laughs> and I watched all ten in a row in like three hours. So give me one. If I see an image of it, I'll remember it right away. It is the one with the idol. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, so this one, this might have been my favorite one of all of them, actually, which is funny because I didn't remember which one it was. <laughs> uh, so we have the young idol giving her first show, and a man breaks out of prison, and uh, Gintoki helps him largely because he's just like, fuck the police for mm-hmm. a while. So he's, he's just, just doing it. actively angry that the police are even talking to him at any given point. Yeah, he's like so irritated that they annoyed him at all that he decides <laughs> to help this convict escape. Yeah. Um... And so they help him run away, and he makes a big stink about how, like, this is his one special day. He needs to be out of prison. He doesn't mind going back afterward. Um, and so Gintoki thinks it's going to be, like, this big deal, and he starts try- sort of acting like his chaperone. And then you, they get there, and it turns out that he wanted to go to an idol concert. And so he's just, like, having a good time chanting with all the people in the crowd, it turns out that uh, Shinpachi is like an idol fan, and he leads the fan club. Yeah, he for this one specifically, uh, he is the leader. He's also wanted to. He was able to get away from the cops because he just like berated them. <laughs> he was that much. He wanted to keep the date. Yeah, they got this. they got released because he started screaming at them. <laughs> and then Gintoki was like, "Why did that work?" And Kagura's, what did she say? She said, uh, it's "Like because no one... the cops know that like the calmest ones are the ones that go the most crazy when they finally <laughs> snap." Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you find out that the idol is actually the escaped convict's daughter who he promised that if she ever became an idol he would bring a million roses to her first performance so he escaped from jail to go and see her perform uh then she gets attacked by an alien that wants to eat her because that's just the thing that happened and they defeat the alien and gintoki gives him a couple of dandelions that he found outside to be the replacement for the roses. Um, it was a very, actually, like a sweet little scene where he throws the little rose, like dandelions wrapped in a fucking napkin. Yeah. And uh, he gives it to him. It was it was a really cute episode. Yeah. And then as he's getting arrested, she kind of continues singing and gives the thing, like dedicates the song to him. The final and, song to him, yeah. What was the name of the song? The song was like, uh, Your Father XX or something, like Bleep Bleep or something. <laughs> It was like she, for, she's for some reason. Oh, is extremely, your, your father is bleep bleep. Your father is bleep bleep. And she's also just constantly making like really weird references in general of trying to be like provocative in some way, but also being super cheerful at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, really funny. Yeah, I like I like this episode, too. I, there's also a really good uh tiger and lone wolf and cub reference when the wolf like that they're i think they're driving in the cars when they're getting away and there's just like a dude and a kid and a, and a stroller and they swerve mm-hmm, out of that's the way why they crash him. yeah, and yeah. Then with, they showed the funny was like the path the path of darkness with me and my child is a is it of intense what he's like he just does something like completely unrelated to what he's doing yeah like, it, it, it's something like uh my child and i walk the path of only darkness <laughs> yeah like He's like, the get the fuck? hell out of the, get the hell out of the road! What are you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, like, <laughs> that was really funny. I like the kind of story that they're going with the daughter, especially since when he does go out and save her, he puts on like the worst disguise in the world. He puts like on a plastic bag, I think. It's it's a shopping bag. Yeah, it's a sh- it's a shopping bag that makes no attempt to hide his voice at all. <laughs> Goes in there, does it. Even the, the weird alien thing, when it starts breaking out, they're like, wait, that was a, a thing? I thought it was like an inflatable mascot this entire time. <laughs> like, even though he was a part of the fan club. Um, yeah, no one knew it was like a, a living thing. They all no. just thought it was like a toy. Yeah, all thought it was a toy. Uh, but yeah, in general, I really liked it. Like I said, a lot of it, it was probably with the pure fervor of Gin- Gintoki not caring about the police. <laughs> that may, it might be like my favorite and it's funny too because right before that uh when shinpachi's like i fucking had it i'm leaving uh gintoki goes we can't have a show without the straight man so i guess i'll be a straight man today <laughs> and then the very oh. next thing he does is say that he's gonna help this guy because he fucking hates the cops <laughs> that's right he does say i'm the straight man <laughs> now it is like yeah barely last even a scene but yeah i thought it was a very nice mixture of uh, comedy and a very heartwarm, heartwarming kind of ending, which is I think a, f- a thing that they start doing from this point on, where they try and have as many. 
Actually, they tried. They did it a little bit beforehand with the guy with the losing his his wife in his house and everything. But at the end of the jokes, there's like a little bit of like a like oh like an emotional center to it to <laughs> go with the jokes, which is kind of nice as opposed to just pure jokes all the time. Uh, and yeah, and I like that. She also had like an advert too, of like go buy my album. Which yeah, I think in was the fun. middle, she said, she said, go buy my album or I'll rip your mole off. Yeah, there you go. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Is this one the specifically when, because one of the ending bits at this point, they've had a couple. Is this the one where they do the, the sensei one where he says like, not every episode is going to have an ending bit. And then they just end it right there. <laughs> Can't remember if it's I don't this remember. One. I know I know that one of them did it, but I don't remember which one did it. Man. Alright. But yeah, that's episode six. A good way to kind of go back into it. Well done on that one. You said you're of the ones we watched, this one was your favorite? I think so. There I liked a few of them a lot and a couple I was kinda of on. Alright. Um like episode fifteen, I almost stopped paying attention. Um, I, I figured, based off of what you said <laughs> about your specific taste, I was like, I bet Zen is having a real bad time with this one, but I wanted it, to talk it, about it. Regardless. Parts of it were funny, but like it, it just wasn't that funny. Mm. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah, when we get there. Uh, for for yeah. now, we'll go into episode seven. Owners have the responsibility to take care of their pets until the end, and this is the one with the, they're looking for the octopus creature. Yes. Uh, what was his name? Pesu. Pesu. That's right. Yes, Pesu. Yeah. Or, or, and or they're was... trying to get it back because this alien prince wants it, and the government offers them a shitload of money. Um, and then the government is like, "What we're actually going to do is we're going to let this crazy octopus thing kill a bunch of people, so that uh, the prince will let us kill it because it's too dangerous to like leave alive." And then Gintoki's like, "Nah, I'm just going to kill it," uh, and he kills the shit out of it. And then the government guy, like, takes after him, and he's like, you're right. I shouldn't let this alien push me around. And then he punches the shit out of the, out of the alien prince. And then in what might be the funniest bit of all the episodes that we watched tonight, at least to me, is the guy's like, you were right, Gintoki. I, I'm following your example. And then all three of them are like, you fucking idiot. People who follow their dreams or fucking ruin their own lives. <laughs> dumbass. Oh, no. they're and they just walk away. Yeah, they just walk away and it freeze frames and the episode ends. He goes, ah, yeah, that. Was... Yeah, he's like. <laughs> yeah, this one was a pretty good introduction. This prince, I think, comes back later on. but this He does. Was... He's in a couple. He's in, I think, three of the episodes that we watched. Really? Three? I... Yeah. I'll go he's in at one. least two, but he may... I think yeah. he might have been in three. Yeah, that's likely. Uh, I like this one because there's a bit where I've, I'm a real big fan of really dumb jokes that are given too much gravity and this one was specifically when they're looking for uh pesu they find that they they said someone's like oh yeah i know what you're looking for and it ended up being just a girl that looked a lot like it a but girl named enough. vanessa vanessa and then they started <laughs> calling it they started calling her pesu he's like no i'm vanessa vanessa pesu no <laughs> but just vanessa All <laughs> and right, then vanessa. when they finally find pesu kagura asks if that's vanessa <laughs> is that vanessa but the funny they're like trying to say well <laughs> When they say, well, no, my name's Vanessa. He's like, well, now your name's Vanessa Pesu. <laughs> so that's what you are now. Like, they just don't want to go looking for this octopus at all <laughs> in any given way that they're just willing to give it to her. And then she's like, oh, no, I, I know where that kind of looked like. And it ended up being a squid. Like, a lot of silly gags. I like the octopus hiding in a pot. He, like, the Shimpachi and says, like, it very early on is like, what if we just put a giant pot in the middle of the road and then just wait for it? And they're all just like, nah, that's stupid. Let's not do that. And then eventually they just get tired of looking for it and they go with his idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it works. It works perfectly. And then they end up, uh, the animation of them spinning in the pot is really funny because only Shinpachi is freaking out and the other two are just like... Just cold. straight faced, yeah. Straight faced the entire time and go spinning around in a pot like in a never ending <laughs> circle. Which I thought was fun. Then when it's flattened, it it stays flattened. <laughs> like there's a continuity of it. it's like, well, we flattened it. And they give it back. It's like we were supposed to come back here unharmed. What are you doing? It's not. It's dead. It's like no. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. 
and then that's when they tell him like hey don't put it as long as it, we're lucky because if it was in any warm water then it would return to its natural form and then they cut to kagura and she's already trying to cook it to eat it alive she's saying like the best way to remember it is to just eat it mm-hmm. and she does eat it at the end she has a giant takoyaki Ta- ball yeah, giant made out takoyaki. of it which does not look appetizing at all when that thing turns into no. its big mode does not look good whatsoever <laughs> actively looks disgusting I think both uh, Shinpachi and Gintoki are literally like, that's fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> but she's even, eating it. And the, the, both uh, these characters are also constantly poor and constantly hungry, so if they're looking at it going like, nah, that doesn't look good, then that thing had to have just been pure disgusting. Uh, a soft all in all, you... pretty good episode, though. It wasn't my yeah. favorite one of the ones we watched, but I did enjoy it. Yeah, solid, some good jokes, like you said. The, the bit at the end when... <laughs> he just completely abandoned this guy. <laughs> like, I think actually the the episode we left on the next one is him like living with the consequences of their actions at the end of this episode. I think that's the next one coming up. Um, but yeah, perfectly solid, pretty good. A, a lot of the similar to like I guess a monster of the week type of uh, episode. It kind of depends on how much of the main plot that you can kind of get out of it and how much comedy come from, come, come, can come from it and I think they did a pretty good job with this one I had some jokes Prince Hada ends up being pretty fun oh that's the thing I need to Prince Hada's fucking voice he sounds like Marlon Brando Japanese Marlon Brando and that fucking killed me Cause I was, cause, really? Cause it, that's funny as hell yeah if you listen to him very closely and you listen to Marlon Brando he's doing a Marlon Brando impression but in Japanese <laughs> He's like, ah. that's funny as fuck. <laughs> it's pretty good. I was like, all right, that that sold me off pretty well. So I was like, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Pretty good. And that was episode seven. Next, we got episode eight. The difference between perseverance and obstinity is paper thin. Actually, I think the version we had was different. I remember the name of it is. Huh. I think on Crunchyroll they called this something completely different. I want to say this is the one that had the butt gag. Yeah, this is the one with the uh, your ass is so hairy that it looks like an afro with a crack down the middle. <laughs> yeah, it is this one. That's why I was like, I remember because the title had butt in it. But I guess the actual uh, English title is this and not the pun that we got here. So now that you've set up what it is, go ahead and tell us what this one's about. So this one uh, is Shinpachi's sister ends up attracting the attention of a stalker. Mm-hmm. Um, Con- Kondo. Yes. Well, I don't know that you... Do you know that right away? Yes, because before then, it's the close-up 24 hours of the Shishingumi Elite Police. And they say Kondo's probably off, like, brandishing his sword. They're, like, building up Kondo as, like, this great swordsman. And then they show him, like, immediately next scene. <laughs> He's, uh... He's like drinking in a bar, like going like I can't. Okay, I'm dumb then because I didn't put that together that that was him until the end. Oh really? And they're like, wait, what the fuck was? Yeah, I didn't put it together until after he lost the fight, oh, and they were funny. like, that what the fuck happened? <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, so uh, he is super in love with her, and he keeps asking her to marry him, and she keeps saying no, um, and he just won't stop. Like everywhere that they go. Yeah, absolutely. So eventually, um. She says that she's actually engaged to Gintoki and they're going to get married. And uh, she does the whole like, oh, yeah, we've had tons of sex. You don't want to you don't want to be with me. And he's like, what does he say? I, it's I, OK I, that you're a slut. I, I don't care that you're a slut. <laughs> but she also yeah. says specifically, <laughs> I've been defiled in so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> His brother has to stand up because like she has they have not done anything. <laughs> Trust me on this one. It's like, no. <laughs> well, no, I, he doesn't even say that. Because the guy says, you mean you've done that, that, and the other thing? And the, all her brother says is, okay, you ha- they haven't done the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the other thing is. <laughs> but, uh, so they agree to have a duel. And Gintoki's like, alright, I'm gonna go to the bathroom first. And they're gone for, like, he's gone for ages. Really and they have the time. duel at sunset. And they're, like, they're having, like, the warrior, like, male bonding moment. And he's like, Duels are best at sunset and all this stuff. And then he offers his sword to the guy. And he uses uh, Shinpachi's sword. And they rush at each other. And then the sword that Gintoki gives to uh, to, to Kondo breaks immediately. 
Yeah. And, and he reveals that while he was in the bathroom for hours, he filed a giant crack in his own sword so that if Kondo used it, it would break in half immediately. Yeah, pretty good. That He immediately it's gets shit so on. fucking funny. Yeah, all, every character just shits all over him for doing it, except for the girl, yeah, the sister. Like, I think I understand you more. But it's great because when he's getting beat up, he's also just like, I think they're doing like a slow-mo kind of like retrospect of it. And he's just like in super, like it makes it seem like they attacked his nuts or something because he's just like, Oy. Yeah, he's like in the fetal position holding his balls. <laughs> Yeah. And then the the episode ends with the uh, Hijikata catching up cuz he at this point he's like so they really drive home how much Hijikata uh, builds up Kondo cuz in every single every time they cut to him he's like what's Kondo doing? He's always like he's probably off like doing something mara- something brave. Something like something that you would expect from the leader of the Shishingumi and he's just like doing the dumbest thing possible. And this entire entire like uh, setup over the fact that he found someone that wouldn't mind him having a hairy ass. <laughs> oh yeah, then uh, so yeah, that's the episode. Then I think there's a class Ginpachi Sensei. I don't remember which this one was about. I think this is the one. Oh no, this is the flute one when he's asking who has a flute because some it looks like someone stole her flute. And uh, I need it back. Whoever has it, if it's a cute girl who has the flute, then please tell me. And then the cute girls, every girl in the class is like, no. And then the condo goes up and goes like, she here, Sensei, you can use my flute. I have two. And he goes, why do you have two flutes? And then it, it ends with them literally shoving a flute up his ass. And the song is, because I forget what it says specifically, but it says, like, if we find out who it is, we'll shove it up your ass and, like, make it sing a song. And at the end, it's, like, actually singing the song, and it's off screen. And mm-hmm. I think, I think Shinpachi <laughs> says, like, can I go? <laughs> and, like, I don't want to be here. I think I want to go to the bathroom or something, and that's how it ends. Uh, this episode has maybe my favorite gag. It's the fact that in the beginning, uh, Gintoki is asleep. And 10 minutes in, he starts complaining because he's like, how come you guys didn't wake me up at the beginning of the episode? I have, it's, it, I'm the main character here. No one has a problem with this. And then he realizes like the, the main theme song has not been played. He's like, you know what? Play the song. And then they actually play the opening 10 minutes in. <laughs> I, I like also, is that the one with the stinger where they're like, uh, hey, how, hey, main character, how about you wake up? For your own show. Yes, that is one of them. <laughs> that where these <laughs> the cons the the idea is that he was asleep for the first ten minutes of it, and then the second he woke up, it's like, oh yeah, I guess the episode can start now. The episode has technically started now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they don't half ass that open. They play the entire opening ten minutes, and after not playing it in the beginning at all. Uh yeah. Uh I don't. This one I think is pretty. I've, it's between the I'm, when we talk about it more, I'll figure out if this one was my favorite. If it's another one, this one was pretty high up there though, just because um, I'm a big fan of really dumb humor. So the idea of of guy finding someone like the 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 central thesis of this would be really easy if she just said I was lying. I would not love you if you had a hairy ass, but she never says it at any point. At no yeah, point she will doesn't she actually like <laughs> cop to that. No, and no, her conviction of this is so strong. She will not. The reason she wasn't, she doesn't want to date him, is not because of his hairy ass. It's just because she's not interested in him in general. So that I really like that. I like the like the twenty four hours with the Shishingumi, where they keep showing the Shishingumi throughout the time, like. Um, where they're dealing with, like, the drunk guy, and he vomits all over Hijikata's shoes, and he's immediately like, all right, it's time to fucking murder this guy, <laughs> and he has to be held back, he's like, turn <laughs> off the camera! And it's it's after he goes, like, guys, don't be so quick to draw your swords, all right? There's cameras around. Yeah. And then the guy pukes on him, and he's immediately like, yeah, I'm gonna murder him in the yeah, middle no, of the you're, street. You're dead. In front of everyone. In front of so <laughs> many witnesses. <laughs> Uh, they also have the great gag at the beginning with the 24 hours when they, they're showing like, and this is our chief, Kondo, and then they reveal after the, the sh- like after they, they reveal that basically it's not actually him, it's a cutout. It's a cardboard and cutout, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a cardboard <laughs> cutout of him, and they're like, where's the chief? And that's when he's like, actually, he's out, you know, sharpening a sword, readying his blade. He was too good for to be on TV didn't see the point of it, and then they reveal like Kondo's like an actual I- idiot, or as they call him, an ape later on. 
So I really enjoyed this one. And it also, that gag in the middle with uh, starting the OP, I also just really like that kind of stuff in general. And also the fact that they went as far as they did with actually saying, like, no, no, we're being real about the shoving the flute up the ass. We're doing that for real. We're not going to show yeah, that's you that's actually anything. happening. We're, we're going to They also fold made through. the, uh, the, it's not a cigarette, it's a lollipop, and I'm just licking it really fast to make it light on fire thing again. <laughs> yeah, they did it again, <laughs> which I assume now they're doing that because of their time slot, which a friend of mine told me that there's actually been a lot of contentiousness of Gintama's time slot. And they said the reason is is that it's always been a little bit too risky for how early it's <laughs> it's been shown. And it seems like that at every given step that they fight it as much as they can. They talk something. about that in one of the episodes. They're like, uh, remember when they're having that? I don't remember which, which episode it is. It's one we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. But when they're like going around and they keep getting the dramatic face freeze frames and they're like yes. talking with their thoughts. And Gintoki's yes. like... What they mean is that this anime is actually pretty hard for little kids to understand, <laughs> and it's causing us some problems, and we might get canceled because of it. Yes, yeah, that 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 one's coming up, I think, pretty soon. That's actually the next episode. <laughs> so yeah, that's my specific feelings on this one. How do you feel about it? Also, that duel was really funny. Like him sending, like him yeah, in the but... bathroom, just like with the fucking knife. <laughs> the the it's like a nail file. He's like yeah. filing the blade down. Oh, it was fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, I really liked this one. This one is probably top three of all the ones that we watched at, at worst. Yes. Um, it didn't have like the same emotional legs that like the mm. idol episode had that I really liked. Yeah. But the ending was so fucking funny. Yeah. It, that ending. It seems like they were going for something emotional, but then they undercut it so hard. <laughs> Yeah, with him being an asshole, and then he's like all smug about it. Yeah, he and, like the <laughs> fact that he's smug and he goes like, "Who? What kind of idiot just accepts a sword from the enemy?" <laughs> yeah, stupid he's like moron. so proud of himself. <laughs> oh, real funny. But like you said, yeah, it's definitely one of the funnier ones, but doesn't really have the emotional thing. Unless you're really emotional. Unless you're just really into the idea of uh, Shinpachi's sister just being so accepting of a man, as long as he's a good man. <laughs> She doesn't care about his hairy <laughs> ass. Uh, yeah, that's episode eight. Episode nine, fighting should be done properly, but I think in the Crunchyroll one, I remember this one, fighting should be done with your fists only, I think is what it, they called it. Uh, yes, that is what it is. Nice. Very. I, which I, The reason I remembered it, because I remember really liking the name of that title. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and tell us that this is the follow, lit literally the follow through for the last episode of. Uh, yeah, of so this one, the Shinsengumi Kondo. finds out that their leader loses, and uh, so they get all pissed off about it. So they make a bunch of flyers to like find the silver haired samurai that beat their their master, and they hang it up all over the city, thereby advertising to the entire city <laughs> that their master lost a a duel. Yeah. Um. And then Gintoki is like having a rock, paper, scissors contest between him, Shinpachi, and Kagura to not have to go to a fucking construction job that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think they they end up doing it where Shinpachi throws a rock, Kagura makes a shadow puppet of a crab, <laughs> and then Gintoki has uh, a family of finger puppets. He and does. That's how it ends. Yeah. Tell, me how, tell me how your finger puppets beat my paper. And he's just like, the family is very happy together or something like that. Yeah. Like, not well, answering. Says, uh, like, yeah, he says, like, the kids are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then it turns out that they made it so that the winner was the one that had to go. And somehow Gintoki won. Yeah. But the even, finger puppets. He even has, like, a defeated victory. He, like, even though he's won, he thinks he's safe. but he And he says victory. But it turns out, like, no, you're going to go work now. And then, yeah, they make him go work on a roof, and then uh, the Shinsengumi boys find him, and he starts fighting the uh, Toshiro. What's his last name? Hijikata? Hijikata, yeah. Yeah. They start fighting uh, on the roof, and Gintoki forgot his name, which pisses him off. <laughs> and then oh, that, there's a really good episodes. joke, too. <laughs> yeah, there's a really good joke. It's like, I can't believe they forgot me after four episodes. And then... Uh, Okita is like, yeah, well, most people probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Such a shit. His hate for Hijikata is just so funny. I know. Some... It's so funny, and I don't know why. 
I don't know why either. I, it's he just like so much hates him. Well, it's funny too because in some of the later episodes they like bro out. They do, but also sometimes he's like, "I fucking want to kill you." <laughs> it's like, no. If there was any chance for me to get rid of you, I would gladly do it. Uh, but yeah, the the, the Hijikata and Kentucky fight. To continue off, we were saying. Yeah, they fight, and uh, Gintoki gets the better of him and cuts his sword in half. And they have, like, a little moment on the rooftop as uh, Gintoki walks away. And then uh, they both talk about how great he is. And then Hijikata's like, ah, sorry I lost. And Kondo's like, ah, it's all right. Okay. They're kind of just like, yeah, it's all right. It's, they're basically yeah, it's okay like a, it's like a bro stuff. out, like, friendly moment. Yeah. And, uh, an honorable thing. Uh, this episode I thought was pretty good too. Probably not as funny as the last one, but it does have some more cool moments in it. Uh, there's a really, there's some real silly gags in it. I like the one when they're like, they're looking for the. the this one's also really weird because it's so specific to Japan that it's actually hard to realize what he's joking about when they're looking for the silver-haired uh, samurai. And they keep fucking it up because the Japanese words are very easy to make puns. So they find like a, um, <clears throat> they keep finding guys of like a guy it's, getting. What is it? It's a samurai getting a haircut is one. A guy eating rice, which I yeah, actually a have. Yeah, samurai so... eating white rice is one. A, so and there's another a... one, and then there's a poor samurai is the other one. Musashi, the, the they call he calls him. This might be Musashi, and he removes the glasses, and he's like, "Why the hell's his face so detailed? That's a waste." Yeah, they're like, "What's the point of drawing him cool?" <laughs> yeah, the, for no reason. So here's the the variation. So they're looking for a ginpatsu, which is silver hair. They find a ginshari, a silver rice grain, sinpatsu, removing hair. <laughs> And a katsu katsu poverty struck in barely scraping by. They find like a poor guy, a poor man, and I think that's the one where he's like, "That's not even slight. That's not even closely related to what we were looking for." Yeah, that's for. not even kind of right. In no way. Uh, I think this also has Okita. I think he names stray puppy Sadamaru number three. Just like randomly, he calls it like the Sadamaru number three for some reason. Which it reminds me because Sa- Sadahara is the second one, which is, I think, in the next episode, the giant dog's name. Yes. But very close. Yes. Sadaharu, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think also the building that guys work from is called uh, Shui Kinetsu, which is a reference to Shushe. The Shu- Shu- Shue? Yeah, Shue, the weekly Shonen Jump place, I think. Shueha? Shueha? I think, is that how you pronounce it? I'm gonna go with you yeah, on this one because so. you actually know how to pronounce these words better than I do. So if you Shueisha. say that's the... sorry, there's an S in there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's Shueisha. Perfect. Uh, the the thing I liked, I don't know why I was. I I think it's because the dramatic face thing is maybe one of the funniest things in the world to me in anime because so many anime do it, and when you don't take it seriously, it always seems super funny to me. Like when uh, Kagura is doing it, she starts quoting Son Goku's uh, opening lines of like "Yo, I'm yo, it's I'm yo, I'm Goku, and I'm here from the sp-. like." She's I think she says like the opening from Namek Saga or something. Oh, when she's rapping. Yeah. No, not not when she's rapping. It's when they're doing the dramatic face thing for the rock paper scissors. She says, "Yo, I'm Goku." You like the his intro for Dragon Ball usually. You know, you know, like, "Yo, I'm Son Goku." Oh, when they're doing the zoomed in faces. Yeah. Yes. And they do it for such a long time, and then eventually. Oh, the I guy... know. It's like it's like a four or five minute gag. It, it's really long with the with the longer version of it. And then eventually, the guy that is trying to hire them is also doing it. Like he joins in with it. He has like also a amazing flashback to explain what's going on, and it's basically the same thing except for he's like super beautiful, but he's still bald. So he has like a terrible um, head of. He has like no hair, but he's absolutely gorgeous. And he's like every scene, he's like in a like a like a the shonen character just super like roses everywhere and i think they said like sorry his his memory is causing him to look 200 percent better than what he actually looks like so apologies yeah. for that so i thought it was pretty good very enjoyable and also the the moment with uh 
Gintoki when he actually finally... This is, like, the first time we've seen him with an actual legit sword. Because when he unsheaths the, sh- the sword, he actually starts doing with the sword. Hijikata thinks he's going to be... He, like, he thinks he's, like, smoked. He's, like, caught him so easily. It wasn't It wasn't even really a fight. It was, like, a one turn. He was about to slash him, kill him. But instead, he goes for the sword and he kind of spares his life. And that's when he kind of gives his creed of just, like, I'm only really fighting for something to protect. And I don't really see the reason. Like, you were fighting to protect his honor... And I was fighting just to, because of because this is like my, my Bushido way or something like that. So yeah, you know, he's basically like we're both technically protecting something, and I see no reason to have to kill you over that. Yeah, yeah. Like I understand where you were coming for me, but I also don't really want to use a sword for whatever reason right now. Which I assume we will eventually get to the point where we'll learn why. But for right now, it's just yeah. Like, we have not learned yet why. I assume it's from his past when he was a soldier. Yeah, something related to that, but <clears throat> that's how I feel about it. How do you feel, Zen? It was good. I like the I like that it was a little like continuous thing through episodes. That was nice because Gintama has been very much like isolated, almost sitcom-y stories. Mm-hmm. So it was Monst- cool Monst- to have one that was just sort of like yeah. So it was cool to have one that was like more continuous. Yeah, yeah, and it's something they don't really do in a lot of like comedy stuff, which is probably why it loses a lot of people i feel like and the same thing could be said about like um uh harem mangas as well or romance ones is that there's a lot of like this character gets a specific focus for a bit but there's no real like advancing the story except for like 30 chapters in or something like that so they're doing this pretty early on so i'm thinking that's pretty interesting with like two parties and stuff like that so pretty cool in my eyes yeah i was a fan also, I just remembered the ending bit from episode six. It was the Kintama parody, the one where he's a delinquent and uh, Shinpachi has like a butt chin. They said like it's like they. Oh, that's like, right. It's instead of the naturally wavy hair, it's uh, he has a natural butt chin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Kagura is like the leader of a Chinese mafia or something like that, or like like a mafia uh-huh. in general. And then they go like, "Okay, for real, the the actual episode thing will conclude after this one." <laughs> but I thought it was funny. It really when they give him like the the Ichigo like delinquent hair, it, he really d- does look a lot like Ichigo. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Looks a lot like him. And now that I you've mentioned it, because in the OP you mentioned that there's a Yu Yu Hakusho type of look, and I looked at it, it's like, yeah, it does kind of feel like they're referencing various like anime OPs through the years beforehand. But his specific scream looks a lot like when uh, Ichigo does a scream, if that makes sense. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the face up close up? Yeah. Like Uh preparing for battle. I think that's probably a reference to that if I had to take a guess on that. So I just wanted to bring it up because now I remembered it. I was like, I remembered a butt chin at some point, but I didn't remember when it happened. Yeah, it was the the naturally occurring butt chin. Perfect. Perfect. And and it's also, like it's not an implant. <laughs> not an implant. And also they make it seem like he's the most beautiful man in the world with the butt chin. Yeah. Pretty funny. The butt chin. He's like gorgeous. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, moving on to episode 10. Eat something sour when tired. This is the introduction for uh, Sadahara, the big old space dog. <laughs> yes, the what do they call it? Dog god. The dog god, yeah. The the giant shit, the shit house, basically. It's all the thing it does. What did, what did they say later on? The only thing he's good for is destroying and shitting, and then he attacks him because like he's good at destroying, shitting, and peeing. He's like, okay, you can let go of him now. He's like, he didn't add anything positive. He actively he added something negative. I think that's in the 15th episode, but go ahead. Explain to us what's in the 10th one. Episode 10 is, uh, they, there's a bunch of kids, and they're like, oh, what's going on? And then Kagura's like, oh, they're around a giant dog. I like this giant dog. Prince Hada comes back, and he wants the dog. Um, or I can't remember if he wants the dog or if he just wants a cool animal. Yeah, he's um, come and back And they to settle Earth on the dog. He, he really likes the Earth, and I think he asks the Shishingumi to go find him the dog. Okay. So they, they're after the dog. And then uh, Kagura finds it and says that she wants to keep the dog. And they want to get rid of him, but they can't because he's fucking giant and he doesn't listen to them. Uh, and it seems like 
the dog only listens to Kagura, but then it turns out it's actually attacking her. But she's just so strong that she views it as playing with her. Yeah. And so she falls in love with the dog. Um, and then the Shinsengumi are chasing after it, and they end up trying to get the dog away from them. Uh, and Gintoki won't give it to them. And then Shinpachi is like, are you keeping the dog because Kagura likes it now? And his uh, his response is once again, not really. I just fucking hate the police. <laughs> And then not uh, to listen to a cop <laughs> about yeah. this buy issue. Uh, eventually, uh, they get hit by a car that Prince Hada is in, and they steal uh, the dog. Uh, and then Kagura tries to save the dog and ends up knocking the car that the dog is supposedly tied to into the river, thinking that she killed it because when she was young, she accidentally crushed the first version of Sadaharu in her sleep because she got scared. Uh, and she starts crying, thinking she murdered another pet, but then it turns out that Kintoki had actually saved it at the last minute. Yeah, and he try he gives it like a little pet, and he has- he-, he tries to eat his hand again. Like yeah, even during this very <laughs> nice moment, it still is like it's it-, it very slowly just goes like oh, <laughs> like goes for his hand. So yeah, and then he- I think he also ends with him saying like uh, I'm gonna take the cost of his food out of your pay, and I think she goes like. Man, you've never paid me before. <laughs> yeah, she's like uh, fondly like, yeah, we did it. You're the best. Also, I have never been paid. <laughs> <laughs> Not once. <laughs> and I think they also end Hijikata and uh, Okita's thing with them going to Kondo. Because the entire time they've been carrying around like this giant dog um, leash. And they've been saying bark, and they go to Kondo. Goes like, "This is what we need you to do. We're gonna need you to put this on and go bark." Because <laughs> yeah, gonna... and pretend to be a dog for the for the prince. Yeah. He's like, he's like, hey, yeah. They had were just kind of like a huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's just staring at it, and then it ends. Yeah. Uh this one. Uh, I really liked this one, and I think it's mainly because I really like dogs, and I like the backstory. Of... I like it when there's a backstory that is for some reason it feels very like it's sad but it also feels kind of like it's a little bit funny like he even mentions i don't know if i should cry or if i should laugh when he talks when she talks about like she got scared and she was she took out her first pet because she like squished it to death while she was sleeping because she was so scared so she would never get another pet until something like that happened uh so when she finally meets a pet that's as strong and then when she thinks she's killed it and she's just like super sad i'm just like oh and then when she gets the the dog back i'm like yeah i'm i'm definitely one of those dudes who goes to dog movies and go like man please don't kill the dog i just came here yeah. for good times with the dog <laughs> that's all i want like it's very easy for me to fall for dog stories and this is a giant dumb puppy <laughs> like an extremely dumb dog it's just one of the worst and uh i ended up liking it there's also a lot of just like dumb poop jokes and maybe it's also because i'm a big fan of jackass that i also find poop jokes funny but when they called his <laughs> take called him taking a shit a debut like he just debuted it on my jump yeah they say that every time he uses the bathroom uh, they call it debuting <laughs> yeah he debuted he debuted all over my idol <laughs> idol things so I thought it was very enjoyable. I liked the the way it was going, and it was very cute, I thought, even though it was related to this dog that was uh, just a menace. Like, at no point does it ever seem like this dog is ever going to behave itself. And then I also got a little bit more moments from Okita and Hijikata as well, doing their... Like, they just don't seem to care about whatever they're just kind of like doing stuff in the background while the, the episode is going on and then when things don't go their way they're very much like ah oh, okay then like they don't try yeah, and fight like, for well... it <laughs> yeah it's just like ah oh, okay I'm gone <laughs> what'd you think about it it was a good episode I was kind of the pet episodes I think all of the ones that have pets in them are kind of like exhausting like i found mm. the story of her crushing her old pet to be kind of sad yeah but uh i didn't find too much of the pet humor that funny because it was literally just like 
it's shit and shit is stinky. <laughs> and took, I was like, it is. Uh, it took such a huge move. <laughs> yeah, it was like all the jokes were just like, wow, it's shit a lot. Wow, this thing shit so big. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally every joke. That's how you could describe it as is like dog shit's big, sad story, <laughs> and but continue with what you were saying. Basically, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so I definitely think it kind of the mileage will vary on this one if you enjoy it or not. As someone like I said, as a big fan of dogs and a big fan of jackass, I have no problems with shit, and I have no problem with just enjoying a dog for a bit. So I ended up liking it probably a little bit more than you, but I can f- totally understand kind of just going like, ah, yeah, okay, <laughs> like no, nothing like not as funny as like some of the laugh out stuff that we've had in the previous episodes for sure. Uh, so that is this episode, and now we will go on to the next one episode 11 which is wash dongos are not dongos anymore stupid rascal what i oh that's right fuck okay this is the one with the strawberry milky yeah all yep. right <laughs> go ahead <Sing> her. <laughs> so uh they are at a hospital because shinpachi hurt himself from the car crash and they talk about strawberry milk and how it's really good for some reason. I just get Kentucky really likes it. I think it's just the only reason <laughs> he's like going um, really into it. Yeah. And they find like an old man and he's like, Oh, I, uh, someone who also likes strawberry milk. Yes. Who also really likes strawberry milk. And they want to, he wants to give them a job to find like an old love from when he was young, like a really long time ago. Um, 50 years ago. And he says that he will he will write his fortune to them in his will if they do it. So they say yes. Uh, and they look around trying to find the person while Shinpachi like does all the stupid errands the old man wants. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They eventually find out that he spent his entire fortune on Shonen Jump. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And then um, they realize that he's dying. And so they go... Um, they they ask uh, Sadahara, can you smell? Yeah, the to thing like that to sniff left? it out. Yeah, and, and um, that's when they also get into this conversation about like, could it even smell? And he goes like, what if it's a really stank woman, basically? And then I think I think Kagura is like, she could be really smelly. He's like, don't ruin women for me. It's like some dudes are into that. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, and then they go to the door of their landlady of uh, Atose. That's who it leads it to. And they leave it kind of ambiguous if it was actually her or not, because uh, Sadahari was so useless at shit. Yeah, it seemed like he just wanted to go home. Uh, but as they are leaving, she does kind of, they do briefly see her in her youth, so I think it is revealed that it is her. It's just like, they don't exp- they don't really, at this point, she's been just such a, like a, they call her a battleship. The battle, the, the reference to battleship uh, Yamato, the battleship of uh, Otoso, or something like that. Is this is this the one where she shoots the laser beam out of her hair? Yes, this is. That's when they call her the, <laughs> the battleship. Yeah. <clears throat> so this one, I just remember this one. I for, I forget what causes this reaction, but I saw this image and it made me fucking die. I, it is this picture of him, of Gintoki holding the strawberry milk, and it's super detailed. <laughs> he gets yeah, that's a good one, uh, where he's holding the strawberry milk, and also the the thing that made me laugh was when the entire hospital was chanting strawberry milky, strawberry milk, because he starts giving like this giant speech. Yeah, about... it's like an inspirational speech about it. But and it's, they all start chanting strawberry milky over strawberry and over milky. again. But it's so incoherent and nonsensical that it makes no sense. Oh, yeah, the whole thing is like nothing. It's like complete bull, like insanity. But it's so much so, but every, he's just like so passionate about it that every, once everyone starts chanting, and then eventually Shinpachi looks around and just not feel left out, he also starts chanting strawberry milky. Yeah, he starts milky. chanting it too. <laughs> just because everyone else is. He wants to be part of it. Yeah, I think this one ended up being the other episode that I, I think I really liked because there was a, like a lot of jokes that just made me laugh. There was one about how um, when you finish with Shonen Jump, you should upgrade to Playboy because it has big, medium, and small sizes all within it. 
And I think that was like also the ending bumper for the last episode. I was like, what does that mean? And then when you go into this one, it reveals that not only does he buy Jump, he also buys um, Playboy. And then they also have yeah. like a, a reference about like, like Shimpachi's like incensed about the way he reads Playboy. He's like, who just skips around Playboy? You're supposed to read it in order <laughs> of the way you get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dumbest thing to get incensed over. They have this joke that they only do twice with the doctor, where they just say the doctor's name is like Jimpachi something, and then they cut to him and he has like super dramatic music, and then they never do anything with it. Yeah, the entire time. <laughs> never, not once did they ever do anything with this stupid gag, and even when the doctor does show up at the end to basically say like he's dead, um, they don't give him. They don't give him that music. There's like no follow through from that at all. When he's being super dramatic about how he's going to die, they cut. The, <laughs> they they show the window and the, the Sonohara fucking busts through the window, and he's on the back. And they go like, "Oh, what the fuck!" And then they go to the door, and then through the door, through the scooter, they bust through the door on the scooter. Like, he doesn't fall through from the window at all. He actually climbed all the way through. It was just so silly. There's, like, I think this is also... I, I can't remember if it's this episode or another episode. Is this the episode where they start talking about what women want? Like, that, what you can find inside, like, the soul of a young girl? Like, they keep bringing... Uh, I don't remember if this is the first, because I think it's more than one episode they talk about it. But it's funny every time. Yes. Uh, they, they, they no, gets... the first one they talk about it is the Sadaharu one. Because oh. uh, they're like, well, why? I, uh, Shinpachi says it would be fucked up if they get rid of Sadaharu while Kagura is asleep. And uh, or no, I don't even think that's the first one. I don't okay. remember when the first one happens because the first one, the first time they say it was the funniest one to me, but I don't remember when they said it. And it was because uh, they were on. No, I okay. Wait, I'm remembering. I'm remembering. It's coming back oh, yeah. to me. Go. All three of them are on Gintoki's scooter, chasing a car. I think it's when they're looking for Pesu. Yes, it must um, be back going back from and, Pesu. And he's like, uh, I don't remember what what Shimpachi says, but then Gintoki is like, that's why uh, that's why young women grow into adulthood, learning to love for the sake of love. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, it has to be the best. <laughs> one. They keep making these fucking women up. The, these women <laughs> are just getting progressively funnier every single time they do it. And I was fucking. I laughing at it so much so that I didn't remember what episode it was even fucking a part of because I just remember them saying like that's the, the 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 line of like that's how you you turn a girl into a woman, but every single time they just keep talking about it over and over again. It is just and it's really always funny. like something weirdly poetic. They're always like, and that's why uh, women reach maturity with the bittersweet <laughs> tears on their cheeks and shit like every time. Yeah, it's so it's such a <laughs> dumb gag, but like it's so much. It's, it's really funny. Yeah, because it's not even really like uh, making fun of women or anything. They're just being super dramatic about like talking about what makes a woman grow up or something. It's super funny, but yeah, to go back to this one, there's just like a lot of jokes in here, and I also kind of like that at the beginning of them trying to make uh, a Tose a little bit more of a character, trying to reveal a little bit about the lady who's just like constantly wants the rent money from uh, Gintoki and everything. They kind of reveal yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they just want they just want the damn rent. She just wants the rent. She just wants them to pay rent, and then you kind of reveal a little bit about like if she cares so much, why doesn't she just throw away? It's like one of those things of like. It seems very clear that she does not like them in the early beginnings of it, but she keeps giving them passes why. And this episode and the next one start to give a little bit more of her backstory of trying to understand of like where she's kind of coming from. Of Chances are she's probably a woman who's tried, like, it's an outer shell. Like, the person that she specifically says, like, how do you know my actual name? Which is, her actual name is uh, a, a, a Yano. But she specifically yes. calls herself a Tosi for what she works in. So chances are is that the person that she was, which was Ayane, like, doing what she had to do, like, trying to help everyone, all it did was get her fired. So now she kind of puts up this other front and is living in this specific life, but she also is still that person at the same time. But she puts it through, a, like, a... Like a like a kind of like a mask of something. That's how I kind of take it as for this character in this guy in this uh, comedy manga. But that's kind of how I'm reading the character at least for this one. So I kind of like what they're doing there. And also, like I said, some of the the, the jokes are just like 
so stupid. Like, when they call her a battleship and she actually turns into a battleship and shoots off a laser from her head. So dumb. And then they, <laughs> and the ending bit is that bit again. <laughs> just decided to do it one more time. Yeah, just the second time. <laughs> yeah. And I also did appreciate that I was really expect, which is something like I feel like would have happened in, I think, a lesser series. Is that I was half expecting him while he was dying to see how she actually liked him, be like, ugh, ugly, and then die. But he never does that. He just genuinely really did love this woman and wanted to see her before he passed away. And he got that, and then he was able to move on. And then they kind of leave it with the, like you said, the the ambiguous thing to kind of, like, set up for later stuff. But, yeah, really liked it. A lot of dumb jokes and a lot of good emotion, which I feel is when the series is doing its best, is when it's a good combo of both of those things. But, yeah, that's how I feel about it. How you feel about it, Zen? It was a good episode. This is another, like, nice emotional episode, which I like when Gintama goes there, because, like, the humor's great, and, like, a lot of it's really good. Some of it sucks. A lot of it's really good. Um, but when they do, like, emotional stuff, they do it really well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is definitely some of the better stuff of it yeah i think it's it's it is really interesting where i think i'm kind of understanding a little bit of where neo was coming from it when he was specifically because i remember on twitter you were saying like so what was your feeling about he's like it's not really the comedy parts of gintama that i like it's the other things yeah he basically said that like he really Mm -hmm. likes gintama but the actual comedy is like bad which I, I don't think I would go as far as to say it's not funny, but I will say that, like, it's hit or miss. It can definitely be hit funny. or miss. You know, that's a, a lot of Japanese comedy for me. It's like, uh, it's a lot of hit or miss. It's a lot of, like, throwing shit up on the wall and seeing what happens and seeing what sticks. And if it does, if you don't like one bit, hopefully the next bit that will happen in 30 seconds will be more to your liking. <laughs> so it's very understandable. Basically. In that aspect. Yeah. But I do, like I said, I think it, they do do the emotional stuff very well. And for me to kind of care about this character who at this point I had thought was just like a tired, like, cliche is very impressive, I think. That's what I feel. And let's see. The doc- the doctor's, the professor's name was Jaijin. And that's what they say. That's right. They say that the <laughs> professor Jaijin is making his rounds. <laughs> And they just, like, he just, (laughs) they just play, like, his theme song. He's just, like, shown, and they never really make anything about it, which is funny to me. Pretty good. Uh, There's also a bit with a a, a ugly geisha that I thought was funny. They just run him over for some reason. (laughs) And then they say, like, I think I'm pretty sure that was a rock. Like, their continuing bit of, like, anytime they hurt someone, they're just like, I don't think that was a person. We're fine. (laughs) We can keep going. Yeah. They're like, it's whatever. (laughs) Either that, or they freak out and they say they want to try to find a time machine and like start crawling into shit. <laughs> yeah, they start crawling into the. I need to find a time machine. This bit again. And now let's go on to episode twelve, which is a person who gives a fr- a good first impression can't be a decent fellow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this might have been my one that was my favorite one. Really? Um, All right, let's get into it. Yeah. So it's uh. <laughs> Atosta is closing up the shop. She finds someone out in the alleyway and offers to let them come inside and eat some leftover food. It's a cat-eared alien person named Catherine, uh, and she starts helping out in the store. And we find out that Catherine is like a a cat burglar, hence the cat ears. Like she's a, a big time thief. <clears throat> um, Gintoki finds out. And kind of confronts her in the street a little bit. Um, or no, I don't know that he confronts her about that. I think he... They, I, I don't think remember. In the, beginning, I mean, in the beginning, he just kind of finds her wandering and is like, hey... And he's just like, we're we're friends. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he knows yet that, that no. she's the thief. I, I think he's kind of um, like building up to something. Like, he kind of is suspecting something. But then a policeman shows up and says, like, we're here for questioning. And his immediate reaction is like, you know, well, fuck the police. I'm not going to really help Fuck them. the police, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> Gintoki's real like that. He's so 100% <laughs> real. One of the realest fucking MCs out there. <laughs> they hate uh, the police. And he, uh, they end up going back and, um... They find out that Catherine has stolen everything from Atose and tries to get away on his scooter. And they hijack a taxi to chase her down. And yeah. the taxi launches out into the harbor. And they mm. start fucking drowning. 
Yeah. We, um, during and then the they have like the, a, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, they have like an emotional confrontation between Atose and Catherine because Atose took her in and um, is trying to to convince her not to be evil, basically. Yeah. Um, and then there's a flashback to how she meets Gintoki, which is she lets him eat the offering she left on her husband's grave because he's going to to die. Basically, he's like super hungry. Yeah. Um, he promises in return that he'll protect her until she dies, like to make it even with the husband whose offering he took. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's he. She's like slow mo. The 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 burglar is about to run over Atose. Catherine is on Gintoki's scooter, but Gintoki leaps up out of the harbor and uh, defends her at the last minute. And then Atose uh, wipes out Gintoki's rent, says that he no longer owes him any debt. And then uh, that Catherine, if she wants to come back when she's released from prison, she can. Yeah, and it ends with her, uh, Catherine also, tearing up at this, which is a good uh, ending case because when Catherine first meets up with her, she's also crying because of the situation that she's in. I think they have like a flashback of like that specific night when she was hungry and she came over uh, looking for food that she was crying as well. So good bookend for that one. Uh, yeah, this, this episode from what the, there's a lot of like good gags near the end from what I can remember. I think one of my favorite is when they're getting into that taxi, because when they're getting into that taxi, um, (laughs) it's a really silly thing that I, I really, I don't know why I started laughing at it, but I thought it was so funny. So when they're going to take the taxi, um, Kagura takes the driver's seat. And she, like, gets the dude out. She, like, pushes him out, tells him to leave. Gintoki goes to the couple in the back seat, and he tears off the door of the back seat, and he tells them to get out. And then he goes to ride shotgun, and he goes to the front door. He, like, very gently opens the front door and gets into it. And I just started laughing because, like, why the hell did he rip the door off so hard if he was not even getting bothered to go into the back seat at all? Yeah, he he rips the door completely off and yanks the people in the taxi out onto the street. Yeah, and then jumps in the front seat. But he does it so gently compared to how he does it in the back for some reason. He's just very much like a whoop, and he goes. Also, in. it's super funny to me that Kagura is the one driving. The yeah. one that's like too short. The only one. <laughs> And then she, her driving is also insane. She's like, she's she's just like in full aggro mode because she took her umbrella, so she's just like yelling out Catherine, and she's like driving crazy taxi style, like on the sideways in an alley, eventually driving off of it. Um, and also again, while they're having their emotional moment, trying to tell him specifically about the night that she met Kentucky, he goes like, when you, because I think what Catherine says to her is, "You're too nice," and when you're too nice people will take advantage of you. Like, people like me will take advantage of you. And she says, basically, yeah, but you meet a lot of interesting people when you're like me. And that's when I think she's she's specifically talking about that. They cut to Gintoki, who is drowning. <laughs> and then all three of them are, like, drowning in the water, trying to float up. And while she's, like, giving this very, like, kind of like a philosophical, like, where she's coming from about why the reason she acts the way that she does. Um... I also kind of like that they fight back a little bit against the idea of a cat girl of like Catherine doesn't fully look like what you would expect from a cat girl. Uh, she definitely has the ears and stuff, but there's like something about her that just feels off enough that doesn't like 100% fall into, I guess, the super sexy cat girl type of thing for me. Uh, even though I think they do play up to it a little, they try, but I think it's also the joke is, is like, she's not a hundred percent that, (laughs) and she doesn't look like the ones you would expect it from. Uh, I also like the, the gag when they, when she's leaving with all the stuff, Shinpachi thinks that they're having an affair with each other (laughs) for some reason. Like he just sees them super close up and it's a very serious moment. So his immediate mind is like, oh, you're having some kind of like affair. Go back to whatever you were doing. Ignore me completely. He's like, no, (laughs) what are you doing? (laughs) That's not it at all. (laughs) And then they, that's when they show that she's actually the theme and she's robbing all of them. Uh, But yeah, overall, really liked it. Really good, uh, funny gags in there. Uh, I like the introduction of this. Like I said previously, the continuing of a character of Atose. It's really impressive that this might be, Atose might actually be the best landlord in 
fictional history. Easily. Easily, Easily the best landlord in fictional history. Like, most of them, including in real life, no one really likes a landlord. And that shows in actual series where the landlords are usually terrible characters with zero redeeming qualities to them at all. That's just the way of the world, right? But to make it, um... To make this character one that actually seems like they give a shit about the people that live there, I think is a very nice way of going to it. It's a great fantasy that we can all enjoy through Gintama and enjoy this character as well. And they can also have their uh, land... uh, I was about to call them landowner jokes. The jokes about those type of people and basically have their cake and eat it too. So that's how I feel. How do you feel about it, uh, Zen? It was good. I liked it. Um, It... The ending emotional bit where, like, it reveals the connection between Natose and uh, Gintoki was really, really good. Um, I really like pretty much the whole, like, final bit where Atose is like, if you actually want to come back, I would still let you come back once you, like, make up for what you did, basically. Um, mm. I thought it was very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. Very nice emotional. Once again, some of the emotional bits are just really well done in here not expected from it at all but great to have him in here and they do also think that she's a stray cat a little bit in the beginning too which was pretty nice and i think this episode also has one of my favorite of the end bits here where they call the so in the next episode episode 13 which we'll get into right now um they have basically a villain for that episode and during the next episode preview i think they say something like who does this guy think he is you're not frieza and then when you get into the actual episode the dude who is uh the main villain is has the same voice actor as the guy who voices frieza in dragon ball yeah the the guy with the sword yeah, the guy with the sword. So it's literally him because I was like, listen, it was like I was like, oh, that's a weird reference to just drop. And then when I hear it, I'm like, that's totally Frieza's voice. You can't hide that guy's voice because he just sounds like the. Hunima. Yeah, because he just sounds like Frieza and everything. Yes, 100. percent Which is my favorite thing about him is that no matter what he does, he sounds like Frieza. <laughs> but episode 13, let's get into it. If you're going to cosplay, put your heart into it. Which is, I have no idea why this is called that. But it is called this. Yeah, uh, I don't know either. Oh, uh, I, I know why. Basically, they... I, I think I know why. I think it's because they, they... This is the one where they dress up as the captain, right? Cap Captain... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. The pirate captains. Yeah. <laughs> the pirate captains. Go ahead. Uh, so, they get a request from, like, a... I don't know if he's a politician, but he's like, my family is important. Um, and he's like, yeah, I think my uh, my daughter is into, like, drugs. And, you know, she's super beautiful, and I hope nothing happened to her. And he hands the picture to Gintoki, and she's, like, fat. That's, like, the whole joke of this episode is that she's fat. Call her um, the, yeah, the, the name and every the time they're, they're like, I think she got into trouble, and Gintoki's like, trouble with a ham processor? That's <laughs> like, fuck. Bad um, <laughs> but a lot of them. Oh, and so they, many uh, of them. It's so many of them. How do you know and, this was released in 2000? <laughs> There's so many yeah, bad Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, they find her at like a nightclub, and she's super drugged out. Um. Yeah. And Gintoki fights off okay. the people that, yeah, she's like super on like space heroin or whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's space cocaine, isn't it? It's like white powder. Mm-hmm. Um, and Gintoki fights off the guys that are attacking her, but then he gets kind of cornered, and the Frieza guy stabs him and knocks him out of the window and hurts him, and they capture uh, Kagura and Shinpachi, and then it turns out that Katsura saved him from dying. Because he fell like really far, but Katsura managed to save him, and then agrees to help him rescue them by attacking the ship that they're in, and they attack it as like cosplayed pirates, like with fake scars and shit on. Uh, Gintoki has like a uh, um, a hook for a hand. They go that far. Yeah, with and it. Uh, yeah, and uh, Katsura has an eye patch, and he doesn't take the eye patch off even after they break out of the ruse. <laughs> they never stop. Um, no. And they attack the ship, and uh, Gintoki wins the rematch and saves everybody. 
Um, and he has another nice little emotional bit where he's like, all my friends died in this war, so I just felt like I would never bother getting any more, but now I have some, so I have to take care of them. Um, and that was cute. Yeah. And uh, this had another bit that might have been one of my favorite jokes in the whole thing. And it's when the Frieza guy gives him his like anime villain, like, these are the kind of people I hate. And then Kentucky's like, you want to hear the kind of people I hate? And his list of people that he hates is completely fucking nonsensical. It's like, <laughs> I hate girls who get excited for school festivals. I hate boys who lie about being excited for school festivals <laughs> so that make the girls happy. And I hate the teachers that let school festivals happen. <laughs> and it's just completely fucking unrelated <laughs> to anything that's going on. He just has a real vendetta against school festivals for some reason. <laughs> It's pretty good, man. That's a pretty good, pretty good bit. Uh, there is also a reference to Pirates of the Carib- Caribbean. Because he, uh, he uh, once again, I think, um, Kentucky calls him Zura. And he's like, I'm not Zura. I'm Captain Zura. <laughs> like, when they call him, like... Yeah. Yeah. Captain Katsura. Captain. And then he throws the bombs. <laughs> yes. And then at the end, for some reason... Uh, he gives the exact same thing of his pre like I am captain whatever except for he adds a date bio. Uh, yeah, adds- and the Naruto believe it is what they put it in the subtitles too, which is yep. so fucking funny. Pretty good. There's another. There's another also reference to the the One Piece, which they say we're looking for the One Pack for whatever reason. Like not even closely related or trying to make sense of the One Piece. It's like yeah, yeah, it's called One Pack. Whatever. <laughs> we're looking for it. We're pirates. Let us in. Uh, this is another episode that I, I really liked, and I think a lot of it also comes down to learning about the backstory a little bit more of Gintoki. There's, like, a really, like, I like the beginning of this episode, because I think Gintoki is a very, like, different MC from what you usually see. Like, he's hungover. He really just doesn't want to deal with what's going on. He's just kind of like, ah, oh, this sucks. Everything sucks. Go find the fat woman, and we can go be happy or whatever. Um, and then that all changes when his actual friends are in danger and he has like a flashback of him, um, like surrounded by skeletons, which I think is kind of related to the opening a little bit and maybe where the skeleton stuff comes in. And he talks, like you said, he talks about his specific dealings with the war and how he never really wanted to be like, he, he says himself, like he, like every parts of him knows that if he continues doing this, that he doesn't really want to experience that same kind of pain that he felt when he lost them in the beginning. But no matter what, for some reason, something pushes him forward to not let go of that specific feeling. And he still kind of goes for it. Um, and I also think there's a cute moment when he, they're both tired. He's like, you're tired. I just fought and I'm also still hung over. Go carry yourselves. You can walk. It's fine. And he says like, never mind. Okay. I'll carry both of you. And then they both quickly run to them. And he's like, they, were- they sprint and jump on him. Yeah. He's like, you guys really recovered real quick from that. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Get on my back. Let's go. So I think it's very cute. And like, uh, with some good gags in as well. Uh, also really enjoyed the Frieza joke just because I was like, ah, Dragon Ball. I get that. <laughs> Good reference. And that's really, I think, the only character he played. So they like wasted it, his <laughs> the ability of getting uh, Frieza's VA for one joke. And I think that's it. I don't think we'll see this character anymore. No, uh, probably never again. Probably never again because they dealt with him. We'll probably see more of his the specific thing he's a part of, which is the Harasuma, Harasuma, Harasume, Harasame, something like that. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Oh, I also did kind of like at the end bit when they give the daughter back because I think in the beginning they said like let's just give him a pig, and I'm sure he won't really re- recognize the difference. And then at the end they do give him a pig, <laughs> and he cares more about the pig than his own daughter. <laughs> Uh, what'd you feel about it? It was good. It was fun. It, it had very much like this is an actual like battle show in an episode kind of vibes. There wasn't yeah. a ton of humor in it. Um, no, no, very. It was good. I liked it. Yeah, different feeling. I like it. how the coolest maneuver that anyone pulls in the whole episode is when uh, Gintoki grabs his sword mid shit, and they make it so dramatic. <laughs> like he wipes his ass. And then he kicks the bathroom door open and like twirls his sword and like slow mo anime slides across <laughs> the floor. 
That's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> Weird shonen stuff like that. Perfect. Now you see why it's so a fucking joke. funny. It is kind of a shame that the specific era that it was in is 2006. Because you know if they had just if this had just been released nowadays, that would have been like the most... Like, what I want is that specific toilet joke, but give it like the Demon Slayer budget. Just give it like the most... <laughs> insane budget yeah insane budget like super high tech for this stupid toilet spin so good but you know they're doing what they best that they can in 2006 and over time i think this is actually the most that you see that this is the most it feels like a 2006 anime because we're in there when they're in the club nobody is dancing they all have like the same two frames of what they can do oh yeah they're like wiggling around yeah they like wiggle here and there and that's about it and I was like, okay, I get it. It was the era. No one was really paying for crazy dances until much later when they started caring about that. And now we go into episode 14, which is the first time for them. It's a two-parter, which is basically two different segments of it. Um, one of them following up from the previous episode and one that is not. The two uh, segments in it are, Boys have weird rituals to make them think they turn into men when they touch a frog. And just give me the armpits a wash, just the armpits. Yes. <laughs> Two vastly uh, weirdly different <laughs> names. Yes. So they. This is the one where the Shinsengumi is protecting a frog, and the yeah. frog's a real asshole, and he's like racist. Racist. And uh, they kind of just like have a little like, bro moment between Okita and Hichikata. Mm hmm. Um. And that's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> like, that's yeah. really all it is. It, it, it's um, also a follow-up, because the, um, the frog guy was one of the dudes... Yeah, he's in out league with Frieza. Yeah. yeah. So they're just kind of, like, following and then, up and saying, like, hey, he gets his... his. He gets part his. Part two... Yeah, part two is uh, Kagura meets this girl who is a runaway princess who wants to be, like, free from her responsibilities, and they kind of make friends, and... Kagura refuses to let the Shinsengumi take her back, but eventually she agrees that she has to go back. Uh, and then they have that this little like moment where she picks up Kagura's love of pickled seaweed. And then uh, Gintoki is making fun of her as she sleeps, saying that she, like, she has a face that screams poverty. Yeah, because the, he's and, incensed with the princess. He's like, how dare she pick up the qualities of the poor like us? She doesn't yeah, know what it's like. Yeah, how dare she try to act like she's a common mer like us? Look at Kagura. She's sleeping. You can see the poor on her. <laughs> yeah. and then But then you look at her umbrella, and she has a little picture of her, the two of them together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very, very cute. So, I the, I the part one was kind of pointless for me. I didn't really care about it. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really care about it at all, to be honest, because I don't really care about the Shinsen Gumi that much. Um, but part B I thought was really sweet and very cute, and I liked it. Okay, interesting. Uh, I really liked uh, the part A part because I really like, I think it really is, is that I just really like Hijikata and Okita together. So it was just kind of an excuse to kind of go with them and kind of tie up a loose end, which is that weird frog guy from the previous episode. And they do kind of like, uh, they do kind of like advance forward them a little bit, like when after, um, their dude gets shot, Kondo gets shot, and the frog guy's immediately like, ah, good, humans are worth something. Like, Okita, the first time he ever is gonna go for his sword, he actually was, like, two seconds away of going, like, oh, this guy's fucking dead. Like, how fucking dare he, like, not be grateful for this dude who, again, they have so much love and respect for Kondo for someone to just, like, blatantly in front of him not even give a shit about his condition after he's the cause for it. He was, like, ready to just fucking murder him right there, but Hijikata was just like, no, your eyes are dilated, you need to f stop what you're doing, because you're not thinking, uh... I thought it was very nice for that. Like, again, if you don't really care about the Shishin Gumi, then it's kind of like, this is, in fact, 100% pointless. But I like these dudes. I think they're very silly men, and I think I like really silly men. <laughs> and I think this... <laughs> Uh, and then there's also a bit when the frog is like tied up on fire. <laughs> like there's they like they, they go like, oh, okay, I calm down. And his reaction is like, well, he doesn't need to be okay. 
he just kind of needs to be bait and then we can treat him however the hell we want. And so they torture him a little bit by the fire. So I like that part of it. But like you said, really not super necessary to anything, which is, I feel like, probably what it can suffer when it's not the actual three main characters doing something. Uh, it's going to vary wildly depending on how much you actually care about those side characters. And I actually like them, so it ended up being cool for me. Um, and then in part B, I like you said, I thought it was very cute. I liked actually the view of like this weird Edo period Japan that has arcades that also has like... Yeah. Four- like 1980s shit yeah and then they also have like their tvs are like uh built like weird little houses or something um they reveal it a little bit there so i thought it was a nice look into the the world itself and i, I like kagura in general actually so it was nice to yeah i have like her, her quite a bit yeah i think she's cool like i said in the beginning i'm a big fan of any girl who's uh, super strong in general especially in anime so she's super strong i think she's super funny uh, she has a lot of good bits, and when it's actually emotional, I think it also helps that she's also like a kid because the, the princess says like you're younger than I am, so that also helps a little bit with it too. So very good, and like I said, that Gintoki mentioning that she is the face of poverty was really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to see poverty? Look at her. Her face is covered <laughs> in poverty. So much poverty. It is like damn. He is right. <laughs> they, they make a very good point of being like, yeah, the if there's anything you can learn about. Uh, the Gintama crew is that they are fucking poor as hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> barely getting by with anything, <laughs> scraping by at best. So yeah, and this is also the new ending song debuts for this episode, which is called "Mr. Raindrop," which I had to look up a little bit of it because I was like s- weirdly surprised that it was in all English. Yeah, it was in complete English. Yeah, so this is a band that's actually from China. And I think this is the only song, according to the wiki at least, the only song in the entirety of uh, Gintama that is not from Japan. And also all in English. Uh, And it has very simple English lyrics as well, like Mr. Raindrops falling away from me now, stuff like that. I thought it was nice. Yeah, it is nice. I like Fusengam a lot, so Mm -hmm. I I like that one a little bit more. Uh, Yeah, for sure. But Mr. Raindrops is pretty good too. Yeah. They also, it also feels like this is the part where they're like, I guess people like it, so we're actually going to animate a background for it. <laughs> because in the, the original uh, Gintama ED, there's like no real animation. It's just like a singular thing kind of going slowly higher up, filled with like a bunch of characters. Uh, so this is the first time it felt like this was a traditional actual ending for it, which is probably why they dropped it early, because I'd never heard of a ED dropping this early, or... Th- from a different pace of like the opening and stuff like that um but yeah, I yeah like usually it. it is a little bit longer than that but yeah it was a good episode yeah yeah and they also show uh this is also i guess the first time you see elizabeth too because elizabeth is dancing throughout she's in world. yeah she's in mr raindrop doing a little thing which i think is probably the best bit of elizabeth outside of the first episode that we've seen so far it's just them kind of like going up in the rain, doing a little dance, break dancing for a little bit <laughs> near the end and just doing a Totoro reference at the end. And finally, we've reached episode 15, which is Pets Resemble Their Owners, which I would agree with Zen. This is the weakest episode that we've seen so far, I think. It's it's easily the worst of all the 15 that we've seen. It's, yes. It's very unfunny and it's pure comedy. All the way through. Yes, all throughout it. Nothing really going through it. So tell us very quickly what it's about, Zen. Uh, it starts and Katsura bumps into them, and uh, he gets he gets like a weird creature from what's that guy's name? Well, oh, Katsura. Uh, was, uh... Katsura gets it from someone else. I don't remember the other guy's name. I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember he's meeting Sakamoto. Uh, Sakamoto, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, gives him like a weird alien, and then they he like ends up making friends with the alien. He ends up really liking it, even though he's like the guy that hates all aliens. Yeah. Um, and they bump into Gintoki and Satomaru. Uh, Catherine comes back and gets rehired by Otose to work in the bar. And they decide that they're going to enter a pet competition with Sadaharu to win money to give it to Otose. And then Katsura also uh, joins the competition with Elizabeth. 
no they have real like reason. <laughs> no real reason. Yeah, he just like they're doing it also. And they have like a skills competition, and Sadaharu's skill is that he can beat the shit out of Gintoki and uh, Shinpachi. I, why am I blank on his name? Shin, Shinpachi. Glasses boy. You got um, it for I, I said Shinpachi, but yeah. that works too. Shinpachi, yeah. And then uh, Elizabeth's skill is like extremely good painting. She like insane like, uh, good. abstract painting. <laughs> yeah. The funny and thing- then uh, yeah. Go ahead. They they have the second round of the contest. Which is the second round is just we're gonna throw a bone and the first one to get the bone wins, which makes all the other rounds of this contest completely worthless, completely meaningless. And then they throw the bone and Sadaharu chases Gintoki instead of the bone, so Kagura throws Gintoki to the bone, and then they end up like wrestling on top of it. Gintoki jumps on top of Elizabeth, and then Katsura jumps on top of Gintoki, and then Sadaharu jumps on top of Katsura. And then Elizabeth is like, fuck it, I'm done with this. This sucks. Get off me. And they're all like, what the hell? And then something crawls out of Elizabeth's mouth, and then it ends. Yeah, it, they cut the TV feed. Whatever was revealed to be so horrifying that they're just like, we cut the yeah. TV feed. They cut it, the feed immediately. Yeah, and it ends with um, Atose and Catherine kind of going, what the hell was that? Hey, we want to know what actually happened. And then it like just immediately ends right there. So yeah, um, you'll go, you can go first on this one, because I feel like... You got the specifics for it this. It sucked. It was bad. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> it's the first episode I've actively disliked to the point that I pretty much just stopped paying attention. Mm. Yeah, I remember saying that for that one. I feel like this was probably the one that you would... Like, when you told me, like, I'm at 13, should I see the other two? And I was like, we need to talk about this one specifically. Because this is the only one where I feel like you're going to have... Of the, of the early ones that we've seen, which has all been either to been of good quality to uh excellent quality this is the one where it feels like the most like kind of phoning it in a little bit it feels like yeah it it feels like they were like we got to get an episode out so just put something out and it was just not funny or good no not good enough there i do like some gags and a lot of them are specifically around um uh katsura and his absolute devotion to this thing that he just met like he loves Elizabeth Despite, like, so yeah. much. Like he it, absolutely it, loves the shit out of Elizabeth, even though he, he hates aliens. He hates aliens, but then it goes beyond that because he loves Elizabeth to the point where it's just like, you think it's cute, right? And they're just like, what? Are, are you okay? This is Elizabeth. Yeah, I like how the, re- the the reaction to Elizabeth is always like, what the fuck is that? And yeah, then his reaction is always just like, this is a fan, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Like, there's so much. There's a, there's a, the the comedy. I think is probably good in that, and will probably get better over time. Like like we've seen in the first episode. I think it was a little bit better with the Elizabeth stuff, with the uh, the use of, the use of them. Um, and I also like the abstract art because they made him. He made the Elizabeth makes Katsura look really fucking abstract. But then when it goes to how Elizabeth look, it just looks like Elizabeth. <laughs> like she, she does not attempt to make herself abstract in any way. She's just herself. Um, when they're wrestling with each other, Katsura has a, a, the great line where he's like, "Ah, I see you do care a lot about Gintoki. Well, I'll just let you know if they, if you keep biting on me, then I'm snapping his neck." And then Gintoki's like, "He doesn't care about me. He's a stupid dog." <laughs> Well, yeah, Gintoki's also like, he can't fucking understand your threat. He's a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. <laughs> he doesn't know what you're saying. And he's treating it like, ah, yes. He's, like, treating it like the ultimate sign of, like, respect. Yes. And something like my relationship with Elizabeth. Let's go. I'm willing to go to hell for this. He's, like, so down for it that I thought that was all right. But it shows up too late. And then when it does the end reveal, I thought that was a uh, too quick of a, like, a, uh, like, a, uh, okay, it. You wanted to just end it and then end it that way, fine. So it wasn't my favorite. There was some stuff that I thought was good enough. Like, I like Catherine come. I like that Catherine's back and that they specifically said, like, oh, I guess we're just not going to make a reference to it, really. And then they straight up just be like, no, no, no. Hey, hey, hold up right here. Because she's, like, saying, like, don't trust them with the rent. They're not going to get it back to you. Don't give them a week. And then he's like, hey, what the fuck? You just literally got out of jail. (laughs) Don't come for me on this. So I like some of that stuff, but in general, just not, like I said, it, it, it felt a little bit just like we need to get an episode out there and it's going to vary wildly about how much you specifically care about the pet stuff. 
and I feel like it was a really weak way to introduce uh, this character. So, and it seems like they're going to be showing up a little bit later based off of everything I've seen. So, I don't know. Weird introduction for sure. Could have been done better. Yeah. Could have been just, funny. It was funnier. awful. Yeah. Should have been. It, it, is also, it is also weird where it's like, it, maybe it's a continuity thing where I was like, so who gets the money at the end? So who got it? Like, I actually legitimately was like, well, they have to pay a rent, right? So who wins this one? Is it a draw? What? Like, there's so many unanswered questions that I was, like, kind of annoyed with. Where I feel like in previous episodes, they've been able to avoid stuff like that. Like, I'm not a big fan of the comedy where it's like, I guess not to be too mean, because this is actually kind of too mean. The kind of Family Guy style thing where stuff just happens and then it's never brought up again. I it. It infuriates me for some reason. I really it, don't like that. It, for style me, of it can be funny if it's done well. And in this episode, it was not done well. No, I think yeah, I think that's the, the best, the basic theory of it. If it was done well, I could excuse it a little bit more. But it just, for whatever reason, just did not hit for me. But uh, you know, one out of fifteen, not bad <laughs> considering the track record of comedy. Sometimes, uh. Could definitely have been much worse. But again, there we go, Zen. That was nine episodes right there. Bang, bang, bang. Five through... Not five. Six through 15. Uh, Just to give a quick thing of here, which ones do you think were ended up being your favorite for you? Um, I really liked six. I really liked the mini story with Kagura and the princess. I really liked 12, uh, and which one was the other one that I really like? Which number were you? Uh, eight. All right. And from, we both know that the the weakest one in here is 15. 15. 15, yeah. <laughs> 15 by a mile. By a mile, yes. Yeah, 15. Uh, for me, I really like, the, like you said, uh, six. I really like the strawberry milk. I really like talking about the women and how they grow, the the one with Patsu. And I also liked uh, episode eight with the hairy ass. Just absolutely some of, some great stuff in there for me. A good combination for me of just pure... Con- I think that was me showing of like, that's how you do one where it's a lot of jokes and there's some consequences at the end. But there's still like a continuity kind of going forward, and it goes into the next episode, so I like that. Um, but yeah, the, the definitely the one with uh, the showing of Atsu, which was I think uh, eleven, where they start showing off her character a little bit more in the with the um, episode seven with the the squid with the octopus, not the squid stuff like that. Some of my favorites on this one. So just to give these six, seven. Uh, where was it? I just completely lost it. Eleven, and I also did like again the some part the the part A version of the weird ritual with the frog. Maybe it's just because I really like frogs, and this giant dumbass frog showed up for some reason. That's another reason why I liked it. But yeah, that's how I'm feeling. That and then again for me, episode fifteen is the weakest. So pretty good start for here so far. Then we've made it through fifteen episodes of the fifty in season one. Not bad. Do you think we can keep no, one on... No, one for, one for 15. Not bad. Yeah. So next week we were going to be going for the next nine episodes, which would be... Uh, 16, 16 through, through 25. 25. So if you want to keep up with those, make sure to watch them. We were able to do it somehow. You should be able to do it as well. Yeah, if we can do it, for God's sake, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Gintal, it's been great watching it so far so i'm really interested to see where it's going especially with their kind of building up some of the backstory stuff uh with what they got kind of interested to see where that's going from there so a lot of fun and man we've been recording for an hour and 33 minutes so thank you very much if you made it all the way here (laughs) we appreciate you guys a whole bunch and we will continue talking about gintama next week we don't plan to change it up 15 episodes in. Wouldn't it have been, have been hilarious if 15 was just so bad we were just like, all right, let's go to something else. <laughs> we're done watching from now on, yeah. Nope, we're done. But no, nah, no, nah, we're going to keep on going forward. And again, once we reach the end of season one, we will determine right then and there if we will continue on with with the show or we will switch to another one for a bit. But we'll figure it out then. 
But thank you very much, everyone, for jo joining us and watching. We will see you guys in the next Shonen Archive. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I really need an ending thing for Shonen Archive. What would be a good thing to yeah. say? <laughs> so, I need something that says, Strawberry Milkies, everyone. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> you know that cover is going to be him holding that strawberry milk. And I'm <laughs> just like, that's the only thing that's going to be the cover for it. Until we make an actual legit cover for Shonen Archive. <laughs>